The levels of organization refer to the hierarchical arrangement of structures in living organisms, ranging from simple chemical components to complex systems of interacting organs. These levels build upon one another to create a functional and organized biological entity. The levels of organization, from the simplest to the most complex, are as follows. 1. Chemical level involves the interaction of atoms and molecules to form complex structures such as proteins and DNA. 2. Cellular level. Cells are the basic structural and functional units of living organisms. 3. Tissue level. Tissues are groups of similar cells working together to perform a specific function. 4. Organ level. Organs are composed of different types of tissues working together to carry out specific functions. 5. Organ system level. Organ systems are groups of organs that work together to perform a coordinate and set of functions. 6. Organismal level. The entire organism, a complex living individual. Integumentary system. The integumentary system is the organ system that includes the skin and its derivatives hair, nails, and glands. It serves several functions, including protection, temperature regulation, sensation, and vitamin D synthesis. Now we will dive deep into the skin structures. Three layers of the skin are epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. 1. Epidermis, the outermost layer, primarily composed of epithelial tissue. 2. Dermis, the middle layer, composed of connective tissue, blood vessels, nerves, and other structures. 3. Hypodermis subcutaneous tissue, the innermost layer, composed mainly of adipose fat tissue. Epidermis is further divided into several layers. The stratum basal basal layer, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum only in thick skin, and stratum corneum. Stratum basal the bottom layer of epidermis, composed mainly of basal cells and melanocytes. Basal cells are responsible for the continuous renewal of the epidermis, while melanocytes produce the pigment melanin. Stratum spinosum consists of several layers of keratinocytes epidermal cells, which become flattened as they move toward the surface. Stratum granulosum contains flattened keratinocytes with granules that contain lipids and keratin precursors. Stratum lucidum, present only in thick skin e.g., palms and soles, consists of clear, flattened, and densely packed keratinocytes. Stratum corneum the outermost layer, composed of dead, flattened, and fully keratinized cells. It acts as a protective barrier against environmental factors. Melanocytes. Melanocytes are specialized cells located in the stratum basal of the epidermis. They produce the pigment melanin, which plays a crucial role in determining the color of the skin and provides protection against the harmful effects of ultraviolet UV radiation from the sun. Melanin is transferred to neighboring keratinocytes to contribute to skin pigmentation and help absorb and dissipate UV radiation. Dermis. The dermis, which is the middle layer of the skin, contains various structures, including glands that play important roles in maintaining skin health. The two main types of glands found in the dermis are sweat glands and sebaceous glands. 1. Sweat glands sudoriferous glands. These are further divided into two types. A. Acrine sweat glands, widely distributed across the body, responsible for regulating body temperature through the production of watery sweat, which evaporates and cools the skin, most abundant on the palms, soles, and forehead. B. Apocrine sweat glands, found in the axillary armpit and anagenital regions, become active during puberty and are associated with emotional stress, secrete a thicker, milky sweat that is broken down by bacteria, leading to body odor. 2. Sebaceous glands, associated with hair follicles, secrete sebum, an oily substance that helps moisturize the skin and hair, preventing them from drying out. Sebum also has antimicrobial properties, helping to protect the skin from infections. These glands contribute to the overall health and function of the skin by regulating temperature, maintaining hydration, 
and providing protection against pathogens. The activity of these glands is influenced by various factors, including hormonal changes, environmental conditions, and individual differences. Thank you for your kindness and support. It means a lot to me. Enjoy your day.